Hey everybody, it's Tyler here at the Las Vegas Regional checking in with legendary Hall of Fame team 987, the High Rollers, bringing another phenomenal machine. I love checking with High Rollers every single year, and this robot definitely does not disappoint. Some really cool, unique things we're going to be talking about this robot. I think the number one thing that pops out to me is for their turret angle. They're actually using a winch, since, winch system, so we'll go more into that, but a lot more to cover with their under bumper intake, how their transfer works. We'll be talking about some more of their programming that they go into. Of course, we got to talk about limelights with 987 as well, too, and a lot of other great things. So let's learn more about them coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Lance, let's start talking about your drivetrain and your drive base on it. We'll be going into your custom swerve drive, what you have, and then you've done a, a couple things regarding your drive rails as well, too, we'll be covering. Yep. yep. So, our drivetrain is run by a one and a half and one and a half bar, and uh, our side rails are runs across from the back there to, the, to our ground intake. And uh, for our custom swerve modules, we, uh, we run a custom steel plate. And uh, for a top plate, we, we have a modified top plate that's uh, for a 16 tooth pinion and a 12 tooth pinion. And uh, we also feature a custom, custom double gear, which is from a 50 tooth to a, actually a 30 tooth. And this is also, a we also replaced the pinion here for a 14 tooth pinion. And we also run with a Kraken motor for each, for both of the parts of the sort of module. So we see so many teams are using like a cot swerve or something like that. Why is it important for 987 to do some custom work on it? So it's important for us to do some custom, some custom work because uh, we want to keep our CG as low as possible. And uh, we also want to accommodate for like any changes between regionals. So that's why we had two options here. So initially during SVR with us, we had a 16 tooth pinion and we changed it back to a 12 tooth pinion. Which now, which allows us to potentially counter any possible defense that's going to be us against. Yeah, you got to be very, uh, yep. you got to be able to navigate that field so well. And 97 does a great job of doing that. Let's pass over to Maktar uh, and talk more about uh, that note journey coming through. Uh, so you got a great under the bumper intake on it. Yep. Love to hear more about that. And we really got to dive into this turret. This is so cool. Yeah. So when uh, we started the season, our team felt it was super important to have an under the bumper intake due to the risk of damage or anything to an over the bumper intake. So on our bottom roller, we just have two inch uh, VEX flex wheels, just the standard two inch compliant wheel design. And then this bottom this bottom roller, the far bottom roller is actually a counter roller. So that uh, we found that this counter roller just being a one inch like rubber roller, it's just, it actually just has a circular half inch hex bore. So we just took a hex shaft, put it straight through it. And this roller allows the note to be kicked off the floor in any situation where it's just up against the wall or like slightly angled. So, and then it passes off into our amp arm, which then passes off to our turret, which our turret indexer wheels, which then control it. So I can demonstrate the intake right now. Intake. So once the note is inside our turret, it makes a ring. So moving on to our turret subsystem, what we have is a two axis shooter. So the turret can yaw and pitch at the same time. So if you want it, so the turret yaws and pitches with this winch right here. So this winch controls the pitch of the turret. We, we have these two gas shocks controlling this. Um, our team is super familiar with gas shocks. Every year we try to, we have a lot of gas shock mechanisms. So we found that using a gas shock would help a lot. So all we do is unwind the winch to increase the pitch and to decrease the pitch, we wind it in. And then the turret is just driven by this custom made pulley that we, and then just this stock pulley with a 184 tooth belt. So that winch itself, break that down a little bit more yep. for me. Like why, when you were analyzing the game, why was going the winch the best uh, option for 97 to go with? So when we wanted to make our turret, we decided turret very early. And what we thought was that the turret with the omnidirectional load was very difficult. So we wanted to transition into something that would fit within the circle of our turret. So we found that the winch was super thin and it fit really well inside the center of the turret. So we can actually lift it up and show you how it packages but it actually just sits in the circle 
and doesn't contact anything versus a gear driven system or something else of that nature. I'm not sure if it's getting picked up on mic right now, but you mentioned yeah. that audible noise testing. Is that from the yeah. robot or on the driver station or where's that coming um, from? That is from the robot. So we have the speaker on the robot that makes a noise depending on which sensor on our turret is actuated. So while intaking, we have two sensors. We have this far gate and we have this close gate. So what we have is it'll stop the note at the first gate, but if it goes too far, it'll bring the note back, right? So they have different pitches. So we know which gate is being activated on our robot while debugging in the pit. You can't really hear it during matches, but it's super useful for in-pit debugging. No, that's really cool. I, I love having that option, getting that sort of feedback. Yep. It's really, really cool with that as well, too. And then, uh, oh. Go ahead. Oh, so very, what's super important on our turret is, Gon, can you bring it up? So we have a pigeon on the bottom of our turret. So we do our pitch base control off of the pigeon versus the Neo 550 because the Neo 5 because the winch is always inconsistent the way it wraps and things of that nature. So we just do a simple conversion on startup based on the pigeon angle to the 550 and then it's super consistent for the whole match. And that's that's it for the turret. Last thing I just want to ask you, yep. um, once again looking at the game, you're running square drive. Yep. Why was going to turret also an important and integral thing for 97? So in th this is a game where it encourages scoring game pieces at a large mass very quickly, right? So we thought that we would just pick up a note and during the amplification period we could point towards the next note. So we could clean up four, which is basically the maximum by ourselves every time. Love the thought process that goes into that. Let's pass over to Dominic. Talk more about your uh, amp arm that you're doing. We mentioned a little bit about it before, but we go into that. And I noticed uh, also you have uh, some forks uh, on your robot as well too. We'll be diving more into the trap uh, applications for that. Absolutely. So I would like to talk about the amp arm. Here, go on, can you move it up? Yep, amp arm up. So we like to use this amp arm as basically the middle stage of when it's going passing through, which we also use this for amp and um, for trap. The best, and we use a rev neo for, to make a tilt, and it's really great. It's, it's over 100 to one. I, and we also use a, um, a bag with a, just a simple one-to-one -one for the gears so that we have a good con connection. And here, if you want to show the extension. Okay, and just bring it back. And then we would like to tilt up and, we, and we'll and we use these line these uh, line lights in order to help us track so that we can have a steady and almost a very consistent amp withdraw. So, and we just score it in. It's really great, it's very efficient for us. And um, if you want to talk about for when we like to go for the trap, we have two winches on each side, which we use in order for trap with detachable hooks in order to make it so that you know we have a consistent and also there's less points of failure. Overall, very well thought out. You know, watching on the practice field, it seems like your team is getting better and better at running your cycles, that sort of thing. When you look at from your last event uh, coming in here, were there any major changes in regards to like your match strategy or how you're uh, approaching a crescendo match so far? For crescendo match, we like to say that the forks was a big change for us because we used to use these rollers on top for the amp. And because we were using that, this um, aluminum gear would break off the teeth. So we learned the, the kind of the hard way. We went through three gears and it was a great, great idea to use the forks. And so now we're going to talk about the extension for when you go to trap. So, so um, here, if you want to... It goes up to 3.9 feet and it's just perfect for our, us, our height. And it just goes in for a trap and we use, it use the same process as the amp arm to bring it up and then we just go in for the trap. And now we're going to talk about the, oh, oh yeah, um, it's able to actuate through the springs on these sides and it just has a hard stop. It's a one time use sadly, but it's great for us. Now we're going to talk about how we activate it, where we use pins in our, instead of like a, a gear mechanism or anything else because we find it more efficient and also weight saving. And now we're going to talk about the forks for when we, when we do the climb. So, if, as, so we use a, um, a PCP a pipe around it with a, with a um, carbon fiber tube on the inside so which it is able to extend out and able to grab the bottom of the trap so we're completely level when we fully climb which is great for us because you know we don't want to you know be off by like you know a couple inches 
So that's great for us and it's easy to retract, easy to reset, and it's just, it's great for us. Very well thought out overall on the side in regards to the mechanical side of things. Let's talk a little bit more on the uh, software side of things as well too. Uh, Gun, we got to talk about uh, Limelight. Uh, you're, you know, obviously 987, known for Limelight, uh, inventors of Limelight as well too, right? Uh, so talk to me more about how you're implementing that. You got a few of them on your robot as well. And it'll be uh, also going into your autonomous modes and how all that integrates in. So run me through everything. So on our robot, we have four limelights. We have three limelights, which is Limelight 3Gs, and we have one, lime, one Limelight 3. Our Limelight 3 we use for no tracking, which we put our core on the back. That's why we didn't use Limelight 3G. And on this Limelight here on our shooter, we use that to track our amp. We use that to track our, we use that to track our amp and track our speaker. Um, basically, our limelight auto um, automated our tilt and tilt and turret, so it can be at the right place. And then we just um, and for these two, we use that for climbing and um, localization. Um, speaking of auto, we also use this for autonomous um, because for our autonomous, we have to know where we are on the field, and for to know that. For, to know that where we are on the field, we have to know our localization by having two limelights that can that can look as far as 270 degrees. Um, we can see um, an April tag everywhere on our field. By seeing one April tag um, wherever we are on our field, we will the robot will know where it is, and we can always pick up a note easier. And with this limelight, we use that. We just in our code, we turn on, um, we turn on our note tracking, and it will go right straight to a note. So it, in our choreo path, if um, if our path is off, but it still see a note, it will go straight to a note, and it will shoot for us by using this limelight right here, um, with it automatic and our thing that we call kill button. That's what we use. That our limelight. Um, we use localization at first, and then when it sees the April tag, Limelight will take over, and then when it thinks that it's locked on, it will shoot the note for us, and that's why we use an auto. So we have your uh, driver station up right yep. now. Can you uh, kind of just run us through a couple things that we're seeing on screen that you described there? Yeah. So one of our autos that we're proud of, we have a six-piece a six piece auto, a five-piece auto, um, four-piece auto, three-piece auto. One of our autos that we're proud of will be this one. We call it Two Line Five. Um, and we call it twirl. Since we have a since we have a turret, we want to use we want to optimize our turret in autos too. So by doing that, we made an auto that will pick up this note and then it will turn around. So the intake side will already facing the other side. And then by the time it's facing the other side and shooting, we will save more time. And this is what our auto looks like. Very cool. We've seen that on the field. Obviously, effective so far. Use this auto as Silicon Valley Regional, and we got um, autonomous award um, with this auto. So it's something that we're very proud of. Absolutely. Congratulations on that, by the way. Thank you. Um, let's wrap up. One more thing. I think we're gonna uh, focus on with your robot is running a, a script as well too. So when we get a chance, we'll take a look at that. Um, so to wrap up our robot, we have a Python script on our driver station, in which uh, it actually communicates to the robot and uh, gives the driver's information during the match. So if I start up this script, you can actually see that the screen should turn on, but it's not. So, so, okay, here it is. So then the screen turns on and it displays the classic 987 slot machine idle animation that's been around for a very long time. But during the match, um, right now, what we have it for is when we enable our robot, in the last 30 seconds, it'll give us a 30 second warning. And we know that in the last 30 seconds, it'll actually beep at us. So it'll do one beep per second, which indicates that, that you shouldn't go in your opponent's stage zone as that's a pretty heavy foul. And it warns us for endgame currently. And that's the implementation we really like. But yeah. Very cool. Well, 987, congratulations on a uh, phenomenal year so far. We, of course, can't wait to see how you do here at the Las Vegas Regional as well, too. Yep. Uh, so good luck here. And thanks for telling us. There's a lot of great things that teams can learn from from this. Uh, so thank you very much for telling us more about your robot, and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following.
Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.